All right, guys, here we are. Let's talk reef. Welcome. Um, this is our first episode of something we're trying out here at Neptune Systems, and we think it's going to be awesome for everybody. Welcome, everybody, to the live stream that we're doing. Um, hopefully, you guys are going to enjoy it. I hope that it's uh, interactive. I hope you guys give us some good comments and questions. Um, you know, let's get right down to it and talk about what is Let's Talk Reef. Um, Pretty much when we go out to all the trade shows, we see all of our control freaks out there, all of you guys uh, you know, who are, are reef keepers, and we talk to you guys at these events. And a lot of times we're talking Apex stuff and telling you guys how to, to best use your Apex, but we're also talking many times just about reef keeping, uh, about products we've seen, other companies' products we've used, uh, best tips on how to reef keep, because uh, you know, pretty much all of us are, are reef keepers here also at Neptune Systems. Um, lots of different reefs, lots of different people here, Paul that you know, Vincent, um, all of us keep reefs. In fact, I've had a reef here since I've lived in California for about two years now. Um, I think it's really important that the people in the industry that are giving you advice too are also keeping aquariums. Um, I actually uh, took a capture this morning, or actually this afternoon, of uh, my aquarium. Um, this happens to be from my live stream uh, that I run off of my aquarium. And, you know, it's it's really neat. I'm very passionate about reef keeping. Um, it's something I love. It's something my family loves. Um, and I hope to be able to reach out to you guys uh, with what we have here and give you guys something that's a little bit different. It's not just about our gear, although we will talk about that. Um, but it's also talking about how to have a great reef aquarium, what's going on in the news, um, you know, what's happening. Um, I'm going to be driving this computer here because this is driving the whole, uh, the whole show. There's my 425-gallon uh, aquarium. Um, it is my pride and joy, and uh, I think that's the case for everybody here at Neptune has an aquarium, uh, and all of you guys out there too, uh, definitely. I even have uh, favorite corals. I'm sure you do. Um, I even have a favorite fish. This is uh, flame wrasse, if you guys... Uh, I've seen those. It's, it's uh, such a great fish, I mean, to have in your aquarium. They have so much character and so much color. Anyway, what, uh, you know, what we want to do with this event, or sorry, this live stream, is really bring all of these uh, uh, pieces of information to you to help you be a better reef keeper, and also then bring in some of the information on how to use your apex better as well a little later in the program. Um, but first, I, like I said, I want to make sure that you guys are you know, giving comments. I see already here you guys are are talking uh, about who was first in and all of these things, but certainly uh, bring up your questions. I'll be looking uh, through them throughout the show and later on in the show, especially um, when we do our tech corner uh, for those comments. But for those that do comment, we will have prizes. So we obviously have lots of cool Apex swag and we will give out like a swag kit to one lucky random person. Okay, so there's that. And then we have, you know, here's some more swag. We've got the uh, Control Freak uh, glasses. We've got shot glasses that you can use for dosing. Um, all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, but in addition to that, I'm also going to be giving away an automatic feeding system. So one of you guys will be lucky enough to get uh, this as well. If you, uh, if you comment, if you provide a question on here, um, it's going to be a good time today. I've got some, some great things to share with you. And uh, take it a little easy on me. This is my first one of these uh, uh, Let's Talk Reef. So it might be a little uh, rough around the edges as I try out this new software that I'm working with and go through pictures and whatnot. So take it easy on me. So let's see. First thing I wanted to talk about with you guys is events. Um, we really like to get out and see all of you guys at these events. You guys give us these great stories. Um, one of the biggest events of the year just recently happened. It was MACNA. Um, we are really proud of our presence at MACNA this year. Um, we really think we brought it. We had a great event for all of you control freaks. We did our uh, meetup. Um, we had about 400 people in the room. Uh, it was a really great event. And then we had our booth, of course. The booth, uh, wow, uh, we really uh, had a great booth. A lot of people came by. We had an aquarium from, uh, what is it, Crystal Dynamics, and then we had um, all the stuff done in the tank was done by LAX Aquarium. Uh, so big shout out to those guys because they really brought it for this tank. And we've gotten a lot of different uh, YouTubers out there giving us the best tank of the show. Um, and we then brought it on to the next event that we just recently did, which was Reefapalooza. 
Um, Refitpalooza is an event that's been around, I don't know, 12 years or so, maybe longer. I, I, it, it was done by the Southern California Marine Aquarium Society. Um, those guys put together that event and it just bloomed. Now uh, they're in a total of four cities. The guys from, uh, uh, from Worldwide Corals took that and uh, really ran with it, brought it to Orlando first and then to New York. And then next year it's going to be in Chicago. So a lot of great things happening with Reef of Palooza. We're going to be at every one of those events. We really encourage you to come out, uh, see us, ask your questions. Um, it, we have a good time at these events and we hope to see you there. Then uh, we do have one more big major event coming up um, this coming weekend. We will have uh, a booth at the Aquatic Experience and that's also in, uh, well, New York, New Jersey at the Meadowlands Center, um, same place that Reef of Palooza exhibits. Um, that will be this weekend and uh, we'll have a booth set up. You can go see the, the Trident displayed. You can see um, demo of all the equipment. Tom will be there at the booth. Uh, it should be a really good time. So come on out and see us at the Aquatic Experience. So as I said, one of the things that I want to do in these, um, these Let's Talk Reef episodes is bring you information that's not just about uh, Neptune products. And one of the products that I recently uh, have seen, it, it really has helped me at home and I've seen a lot of people using it. Um, how many of you uh, take a photograph of your aquarium and it looks something like this? Um, it's really common, especially if you're, you have you know, a lot of uh, blue lights in there, um, a lot of that, uh, that blue spectrum to pull out the colors in your corals. But that's not really what your eye sees, is it? And what's really neat is if you have a device that can bring that color out, to bring it like it seems. And there is a, there have been a few different filters out there recently, um, but nothing has really done it like this product I've got right here, uh, which is the Coral View Lens. It's uh, being uh, distributed by Polyp Lab. Um, I got one of these and I put it on the camera and I'm going to give you guys a, an example of some of the differences that you can see here. Here's that picture that actually, um, believe it or not, that's a Millipora in the front and a Walt Disney Tenuous, I think, in the middle and then there's a, uh, uh, what the heck is that? That's a tort in the back, right? And so what's it look like when you put this on there? That's what it looks like. It looks almost identical to what your eye sees. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm seeing some comments in here where you can use a manual mode and you can do all of these things. I get that. Um, but many of us, we're point and shoot people. We want to put this little clip on there. We want to take pictures and have it just come out. And if it's 95% of the way there, um, that's good enough because I need to move on. Uh, I know there's plenty of ways to do this in post, but this is a, a quick and dirty point and shoot way of doing it. Let's take a look at a couple of others. Because it really is amazing to me. Here's a, this is a Spain bow, I think is the common name uh, for you industry guys. And this is what it looks like with the lens on. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. Um, it's, it, it, I just can't believe how much it looks like exactly what my eye sees. Here's a bubblegum digitata, okay? And here's what it looks like. Uh, so I just took these the other night in my tank and I, I really can't believe how good this product works. Here's uh, some pallies. I think those are utter chaos pallies uh, with a couple of clownfish. Here's in the same spot. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, clownfish and pallies there. So a really, really good product. Um, and it's really simple to use. Let me show you what it looks like. So here we've got this little clip. And then on the back of the clip, you'll see right here, there's actually three holes. That's because some of, the, some of the camera phones nowadays, and mine's buried beneath this microphone, of course, wouldn't you, wouldn't you guess? That's okay, we'll pull it out. So some of the uh, cameras these days, right, they've got, you know, three lenses or two, two lenses and a flash, so you need to have those three holes. And then you just screw on these little filters on here. This happens to be an orange one. They've got a more yellow one here. Um, they've even got a, uh, a polarizing filter now, so you can take some of the glare off. Um, somebody wrote, where do you buy it? Uh, I think it's available on many of the online shops. Some of the stores have it. Polyp Lab is the company that, uh, that makes it or distributes it. Um, and then they also have a, a little macro lens, which is really cool for getting these close-up shots. And they all just screw on here. You can stack more than one, so you can stack 
the, the, the colored filter, you can stack the macro lens, and then you can stack the, uh, uh, the uh, other filter on top of it. You can, you can use both color filters if you want. Uh, it works really, really well. Um, <laughs> Mark just said, <laughs> Mark is in here pitching. Mark, uh, Mark Levinson from MeLivesReef.com, who I had on a live stream over at Reef of Palooza, is on here. He said he has it in his store, so there you go. Um, and somebody else wrote, yeah, well, if you turn the whites on to 100%, the problem's solved. Well, kind of, um, uh, for the most part, but you know, sometimes that's not super easy for people to do either. Um, definitely a cool product. I don't remember what they retail for. Maybe, uh, maybe Mark will let me know here. Uh, but uh, okay, next thing up, um, kind of uh, the thing we hate to talk about. How many of you guys know what that thing is? It's, uh, it's something we all, uh, we all don't want. Um, it's one of the worst pests a reef keeper can, can have uh, in their aquarium. And what it is, is it's an acro acropora eating uh, flat room. Or if you want to be the science guys, uh, or I should say the old school guys like Kurt here, and a, and a crap, a, a crap, no, acropora, sorry. Uh, the acropora eating flatworm. Um, these guys are horrible. Um, they're, uh, they'll just destroy all of your acros in your tank. Um, this is actually from MeLivesReef.com. So he has a, a whole thing on pests out there. Uh, and he shows these good pictures. You can see in the upper left one there, you can see where all the bite marks are. The crazy thing about these uh, flatworms is, is that their color and their translucency means that when they're on the coral, you can barely see them. I mean, they're almost impossible to see. In the upper right corner, you see the picture where you can see them. That's because the coral has actually dried out a little bit, and you can see the, the pests on there. And then he shows you kind of the size of them. Um, here's a close-up of some of the bite marks, the, the telltale sign that you've got uh, Acropora eating flatworms. These things are horrible. And the worst part about it is, is that they then, on the dead tissue, especially on the base, they lay eggs. Um, and so even if you get rid of the, the flatworms many times, these eggs are down under the crevices of the coral, the bottom of the base of the coral. And, uh, and often when you dip the, the, uh, your corals as well, when you bring them in, they are, uh, they're there as well. Um, so the, you know, the real question, the first thing that comes up is, you know, when you have these, how do you, how do you keep from getting Acropora eating flatworms? I'd say that the, the first thing to do, which doesn't guarantee anything, but it's certainly the, uh, the best first step, is to only get corals from people that you trust or that you know have a clean tank or that they run an operation that runs a clean operation. That might get you 95% of the way there um, in preventing having acro-eating flatworms in your tank. Certainly if you go and get um, uh, corals off of uh, eBay or off of Craigslist or something like that, you might be taking your chances uh, you know, right, out of the, right out of the gate with Acropora eating flatworms. One of the things that you should do for sure, in my opinion, and the opinion of a lot of people um, who are Acropora kind of people, acro people, um, is if you get corals and they have a base on them, for instance, like these are um, maricultured uh, corals, uh, that are coming from a farm somewhere, maybe Fiji, maybe over in Indonesia. Um, not Fiji right now, for sure. Uh, but a lot of times, because those eggs are in the base of the coral, if you cut the coral off or you know, break the coral off with a pair of bone cutters or if you have a coral saw at the base and leave the base behind and just you know, chuck it, really, you're already going to start off in a much better shape of preventing those acropora eating flatworms because you won't have the eggs most likely um, because they'll be down at the base. Then you go about and you do, uh, you know, you're dipping. So when you go to dip the corals, you're going to want to use products. There's some products out there, for instance, like Coral RX. Um, there's products like Revive uh, from uh, Two Little Fishies, which is a great product. Um, well, we got to get that in the screen here. How about that? Revive and Coral RX. Okay. And then on top of that, there's also a, uh, another product, I believe, that Blue Life USA, a Coral Essentials product that they are now selling uh, that will uh, go ahead and you put that in a bath and you, you know, use a little baster like this guy right here and you squirt it off. And you can even use a little bit of fresh water and they'll come off of the coral as well. 
Um, I know f uh, for a fact that, uh, uh, that Joe Wyulo of the Long Island Aquarium um, actually uses a garden hose in his 20,000 gallon aquarium uh, to go and knock the, the pests off of the, you know, the corals. Um, that's the thing though, is once you get these in your tank, what do you do? Um, because they're the worst nemesis you can get. Well, the best thing that you can do is probably take those corals out, but that's usually not possible for most people without really tearing down their entire tank. Um, the, uh, the, you know, the other option that you have is to do something like Joe is doing here, which is take fresh water and try to blow them off and hope you have some wrasses that are going to eat those worms. And you're not going to eradicate them by any means because they'll continue to reproduce. You just kind of slow them down and keep them from taking their toll on your corals too much. Um, the, you know, the next thing is, well, is there an in-tank treatment? And uh, as of right now, there's nothing like Interceptor that's available. Um, there is one product that is being tested by lots of people on the market. It's come to market. Um, first, let's talk about this tank. You guys probably saw this tank in the opener. Um, any of you guys know whose tank this is? Because I see uh, somebody there is, is telling me about the product that we're going to talk about. Oh, and somebody talked about Bayer. Sorry, I forgot to talk about Bayer. This is also a crazy thing, too, on the dips. Um, the, the Bayer stuff, uh, you know, is the insect. You can go to Home Depot and buy it, and you can find on Reef to Reef uh, all sorts of information on using Bayer. But you basically dip your acros in a, uh, in a bug killer, and it works. And it doesn't aggravate the corals really at all um, if done properly. So thanks for reminding me about the Bayer dip, because that's, that's absolutely something to be used. Um, Brandon got it right. Um, Brandon said Sanjay's. That is Sanjay's tank. I went out to Sanjay's place, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe about eight months ago or so, and uh, took some great video of his tank. And uh, the, the reason I bring up Sanjay's tank here is I was actually just chatting with Sanjay yesterday. Sanjay, ha and if you guys don't know what Sanjay looks like, this is the best picture I could find of Sanjay. It was, I mean, I've never seen a happier Sanjay in my life, okay? I think he's down in Australia diving. Um, and so, I mean, how excited could you be if you were diving in Australia? I know I'd be just completely ecstatic, so he is there. Anyway, Sanjay has put up on the internet that that beautiful reef right now is um, under a lot of stress from acro-eating flatworms, okay? And, uh, and so he's lost a couple of big colonies already to these beasts. It's horrible. He's had 12, I think 10 to 12 years in this reef growing these gigantic colonies. Beautiful tank as you saw in the video. Um, and so Sanjay decided he was going to try this product that some, some of you put out there called Purge. And uh, there's a few people out there on the internet trying it with mixed results. I don't know and, I, and, and can't say if, you know, uh, if it really works or not. I can only report back what you know, at least Sanjay has told me. Um, and Sanjay first, he showed me what the stuff looks like in the, in the, in the bottle. Um, I, you know, I don't know, it doesn't look like anything else I've ever put in my tank, but okay, it, it's possible. Um, and yeah, it's called uh, Purge, yeah. Um, so, what happened? Well, Sanjay ran, ran the stuff in his tank according to instructions. Um, and at least for Sanjay so far, this is not something that works in eradicating acro-eating flatworms in your aquarium. He dosed it according to him, uh, the directions, supposed to kill them all off, supposed to kill the eggs. He still has eggs on corals, as you can see, and he still has acro-eating flatworms. So, you know, the, the, the moral of the story, I think, with acro-eating flatworms is don't get them in the first place. Don't put things in your tank, you know, you go to a, even a, you know, a frag swap, just go grab those corals, get home and chuck them in your tank because, um, you know, if you've got a lot of beautiful colonies, you're putting them all at risk and, uh, you know, you have to do these things. You have to do the dipping. You have to use the products to dip. Um, thank you for reminding me about the Bayer, um, which, whichever one of you guys did that. Um, and, uh, and anyway, so that's something you got to do. So the... Next thing I wanted to talk about is maintenance. Now, interesting thing about maintenance is, is that we all have different things that we have to do uh, on our aquariums that we kind of get in a routine with. 
Um, we have to change our filter socks out. Uh, we have to clean our skimmer. Um, we have to take our pump out and we clean our pump. Um, I had an interesting experience about a month ago with something on maintenance where there was one piece of my aquarium that I did not do any maintenance on for two years now that I completely neglected and I know I feel ashamed about it, uh, but it was my UV sterilizer. I have this really cool UV sterilizer like the one you see here. I put it in. I kind of did the Ron Popeil. I set it and forgot it, you know. Um, basically, uh, didn't do anything with it for two years and, you know, hoped it was doing what it should be doing. Now, um, what do you have to do with a, uh, you know, with a UV? Well, what you're supposed to do is either, you know, take it apart and clean it, or if you've got a wand, like some of them do, you're supposed to, you know, wipe it down because inside, you, you know, here's where you open it up. Uh, you open it up and you pull, you know, first you got to shut the water off because that would be a really bad thing if you didn't shut the water off to it, uh, if you've got it on a manifold or what have you. Uh, but when you, when you open it up, inside is a bulb. And it's not really just a bulb. It's a bulb inside of a quartz tube, okay? Um, somebody, Nancy says, uh, they're going to, Nobody's going to get that reference that I'm dating myself. That's the Ron Popeil, uh, set it and forget it with his turkey cooker. Um, so she's probably right. Um, but anyway, this is, the, uh, this is the tube that has the bulb in it. And it's actually a quartz tube uh, that contains the bulb. And if you notice on the outside of that tube, it's really white. It's not supposed to be white. It's supposed to be clear. So what's on the outside? Well, it's basically the same stuff that gets on the outside of your heaters, which is the, the, the calcium deposits from your aquarium um, that deposit on there and then occlude the light from being able to come out and then your UV is not effective. So you have to clean this and basically I just wiped it down and that stuff just knocked right off because the quartz is really smooth. And you can see this is the, the remnants of that. That's not the, the glass or the quartz breaking. That's actually the calcium deposits on there that just fell off and went onto the floor. Now when I was done, this is the nice squeaky clean quartz uh, tube that I can put back into my UV. And by the way, that's my sump uh, for my aquarium right there. So it's, uh, you know, it's definitely something to be done. Um, I also probably need to change the lamp here shortly. It's probably past its useful life. Um, but I think the moral of the story on this one that I wanted to get across to you guys is that sometimes there are, there are maintenance things that have a longer time interval that aren't as obvious that you're going to want to make sure that you're still doing uh, to keep your reef in good order. Um, so, you know, definitely look for those things on your aquarium, find out what they are, and, uh, and do them. So, what's next? Let's see here. Well, next... You're probably thinking to yourself, what about the apex? Um, what about uh, the things that are going on in the Neptune world? Um, well, right now what's going on is we're working like crazy on the Trident stuff. Uh, so I'm going to get ahead of all your Trident questions because I know they're here. And we'll take one or two maybe. Um, we'll see at the, at the end when we take questions. Uh, but we're working like crazy here to get it ready to go out to our Neptune Systems Insiders, which is going to happen, you know, not too distant future. A um, lot of engineering happening here. There's a lot of parts coming in, and uh, we're working hard in the Trident. Meanwhile, um, we're still working uh, very diligently on other software items, too. The Alexa uh, integration, the Alexa skill, has been released about a couple of weeks ago. So if you are a person that's into the Alexa stuff, even if you're not, you should take a look at it, because you can do the voice control now of your aquarium with Alexa. Um, so that's a couple of things that are going on in the, you know, in the uh, Apex world. Also, you can control your AI lights now. That's also released if you have the AI Prime HD, uh, the HD26, HD52 from uh, Aqua Illumination. Those can be controlled with no extra module now um, with your Apex, as long as you've got one of the newer Apexes um, or the Apex EL. Um, so now I've got another segment for you guys that we're going to do. Let me throw that intro.
All right, who do we have here? We have Paul. So what'd you guys think of that intro, huh? Paul couldn't hear it. Everybody's going ha, 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 the music, and he didn't hear it. I still haven't heard it. <laughs> so he, he, I think uh, earlier you introduced me to it, and it was on mute. You're like, wait till you hear the music. Yeah, but then I so, muted it here, so you couldn't hear it either. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. So but anyway, we're welcoming Paul to, to, this is Paul's little Apex Tech Corner, and we're going to have this every week as well. Um, where we're going to uh, talk about things that you can do with your Apex, tips and tricks that Paul is going to bring up, uh, you know, answer your questions. We're going to do all of that here. Um, and I, it, was the, it was the intro for Let's Get It On. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, so. uh, I'll go to follow up to that. Uh, Terrence approached me. About Sorry, Ken. I get, this, is, this is a live stream, so we can do this. Ken says pimp music. What can I say, <laughs> so. right? Right? Uh, so Terrence approached me about this live stream uh, a couple weeks ago and, uh, you know, proposed this tech corner. And I, at first I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be up here. But I'm really excited to be bringing you guys, um, you know, kind of some insights I have to using the Apex and uh, answering common questions. Uh, worked with my support team and things like that to find out, you know, what's a common question. Oh, that's, that's right. Really easy. That's right. Know? I actually got to put your little little bar on the bottom there. Oh, <laughs> uh, I see. Nice, nice. So, um... So, uh, so for week one, right, what I wanted to cover is something really basic. So I have my training meals on this week, so take it easy on me, guys. But a common question that we get, you know, with the Apex, right, is how, you know, I got a new router, right? Internet came over, and uh, now my Apex won't connect to Apex Fusion. How many people have had that kind of problem? You know, according to my tech support team and our analytics, quite a few people have that issue, right? Um, you maybe change internet service providers, you upgrade your router so it's stronger, faster, yada, 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 right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So the easiest thing to do I don't know, that happens to me all the time. I hear from family members, not so much mm -hmm. with the Apex, yeah. but, you know, they their phones or other things don't work yeah. because those guys come in, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And they change things around mm -hmm. and they leave. And then they leave it for the family members to, to sort it out. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, you get home, right, and you see your Apex has an orange status light. It should be connected up to Apex Fusion. Well, you got a new router. It's not. Well, the best thing to do is just when the Internet service provider comes over, mm -hmm. tell him to keep the same SSID, all right? That's, just, that's your wireless network name. So at your house, if it's called the Foo's house, okay. right, so that, you know, when someone comes over, hey, how do I get to the Internet? Oh, Open up your well, wireless. Well, the same thing I tell people when they come to my house, how to get on my wireless. Yep. Just make sure he keeps mm -hmm. that name the same. And then the password. Okay. You keep those two things the same. You're not going to have any trouble. And, uh, you know, all you got to do to get your Apex reconnected is just power cycle it. Okay. And well, how, what, do, how do you power cycle Oh, it? you got ahead of me on that know, question. I already know. You're going to unplug the Aquabus cable. Okay. Also known as a USB looking light cable. But okay. it's not USB. Unplug it. Status light goes off on the Apex, plug it back in, it'll connect right back up to Apex Fusion. Okay, if I have two of them in there, do uh, I have to unplug them both? Unplug them both, just okay. as long as the light on the Apex goes off. Okay, that's okay. the key. The nothing's going to change in your programming, nothing's going to happen, it's just going to go off for a second and come back on, it's not a big deal. Okay. Okay? Um, now, if your internet service provider guy is not so nice, or he's like, well, that's going to cost 50 bucks. You know what? Don't pay him fifty dollars to do that. It's really easy to get everything okay. reconnected on the Apex, and I'm just going to go with a quick little how-to of how to do that. Okay. Well, let me get our little demo set up here for you, Paul. Cool. Look at that. It's All like right. the Brady Bunch, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Here's there a story. It's... Yeah. How's it going? Yeah. It's so really good. Uh, to do that, right? You're basically you get home, you see you have an orange status light in your Apex, but you also see that you are disconnected from Apex Fusion. You got that red exclamation point. No fun, right? Well, all you got to do is hold that Apex reset button. There's a reset button right there where that paper clip is for 10 seconds till the Apex turns blue. Okay. Don't hold it for 20 seconds, Terrence. Okay. Just 10 seconds, okay? That's okay. a 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000 turns blue, let go. If you go all the way to red, You've just put your Apex to factory Ooh. settings. You know, everything's going to go back to default. That's not good. Then i got to call in my cousin to redo no, it for me. No, no, no. Just go to the Get Started page for your Apex. Or, you know, you made a great 15-minute video of how to set it all up. Awesome. And just go through that. Okay. But hold it till it goes blue. There it is on blue. Okay. Okay. Pull out your phone. Okay. Connect to that network that says Apex Setup. That's it. Right? There's can, only one, though, usually. You just there's have usually to... one. We've got a few Apexes around here on the office, okay? And I got something secret down there in the black. You guys are <laughs> like, what do they have down there? Trident. Anyway, yeah. And then, um, you know, Terrence, you, you know, how do you, tell, how do you get to the local page? Well, you could go to something called Apex.local, all right? Okay. Um, but that doesn't work on Android phones. And what is your Apex called? Is it called Apex? It's called Fugazi 425. 
Fugazi425.local is what you would go to. Okay. Or right. I would go to the nerd tank of 0RS170. So whatever it shows up in my list, yes. right, mm -hmm. I put dot .local. But it's easier than that. You can just go to that address right there. I'm going to hold here for a while at 172.16.01, and that's on an Android, on a Blackberry, on an i, whatever it is. It will go to this page. When you're connected to it. Right, okay. exactly. Once you, It'll go to this page right here, and you're going to see a, a slew of wireless networks. We are in a congested environment, and all our Apexes stay connected up great. Okay, I'm going to choose that one that's called Neptune Main down there. Okay, it's just one of the ones I selected. Okay. Put in the password. Make sure you put that password in correctly. See that little eyeball there? Mm -hmm. Click on that. Be like, yeah, I did type that in correctly. Okay. If you connect it and the Apex goes back to blue, you type the password incorrectly, or that router upgrade really wasn't a router upgrade, okay? And <laughs> you right. actually have a weaker router on your hand, um, but uh, and the Apex can't connect to it. But after you put in that password, it's gonna go orange, okay? okay? And then after that, bingo orange, not blue, and there it is, reconnected back up to Apex Fusion. Seems pretty like simple, but I think it's simpler just to tell them, "Hey, make my SSID." Oh yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know, same. you buy, you know, you buy a new route. People buy new routers all the time. You know, they they got this new gaming system, and they, you okay. know, their son can't connect to to their to to the to, to his peers, right? Uh huh. And you just got to get that new router. Oh, you don't get that new router, router with the twelve right? with the with twelve the antennas. antennas everywhere, yeah. right? <laughs> so and uh, and it's maybe you don't know how to change all that. That's okay. It's easy for the Apex to set up. All okay. Right. So um, uh, the, probably a lot of questions on that, you know, in terms of connectivity and that. I'm not going to get into the weeds on that. Uh, the good thing is we have a great support team. If you are having trouble getting connected up to your Apex after a router or at the first start, just send us an email, fill out a ticket, give us a call. We're happy and we're here to help. Okay. Um, other thing I wanted to point out, you talk about Apex Alexa, didn't you? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of people are saying, well, how do I get connected up to Apex Alexa? Guess what? That's easy too. How do you get connected to Alexa? Yes, Paul? it's easy. It's easy. Are you ready for this, Terrence? I'm, I'm ready. So I, I, I full confession, um, I hadn't set up Apex Alexa until yesterday. Um, other people have just given. You're me so a, important now that somebody yeah, does it for you. Yeah, people have just <laughs> given me an Alexa device and said, "Hey, Paul, look at how great this works." And I go, "Oh yeah, look at this." So I actually set it up yesterday, and okay. it was really easy. So what okay. I did was, um, like, there it is, the Alexa app. Um, I opened up my Alexa app on my iPhone, my Android. Okay. I clicked on that menu button. You see there I have in the yellow. So this is on my phone, right? Yep, yep. I'm on my phone. Okay. I clicked on the yellow menu button. I, well, hang on a second. Oh, oh. Hang on. Oh. Okay. Going to slow it down slow for you here down. a second. <laughs> Going too fast. So if you, uh, if you already have an Alexa device, right, you might already know this, or you might have forgotten because it was so long ago, but there, there's an app that you have to download. You might have even deleted that app, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. So you've got to have the Alexa app. Yes. You download that Alexa app, and then you open this up, and you'll be at this window. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. And this is the Alexa app. You know, you're connected up to your internet. You have your Alexa device in your home. Uh -huh. uh, we're assuming you have basically the framework of, of making Alexa work, right? Right, yeah. It, okay. Okay, good. Okay, now I'm with you. So you, got the, okay. you, you, you click the hamburger. Menu. Click the hamburger. I click on this thing called skills and games. Want to go play fish? <laughs> yeah, we're right? going to go play fish. Yeah. So it's a game. Uh, click on skills and games. Um, search for Apex Fusion. Okay. You're going to get an app and you're going to click on that skill and it's going to take you right into this login. Okay. okay? You put so it's right now sharing basically with mm -hmm. our Apex Fusion. They're connecting in the cloud. So yep, a lot of people asked still. how this happened, right? It has nothing. It's not happening on your Apex. Mm -hmm. It's actually happening in the cloud. So you've got our cloud server and you've got the the Alexa cloud server. Yep. And now what you're trying to do is make them talk and by sharing basically like a, a key or something, yeah. now they'll be able to talk to each other. And that's what you're doing right here, right? Yeah, a lot of engineer speak and all that. You yeah. know, we, don't need, we, don't need, we need to go into the weeds there. So this but is where you log in. Just sign in. If you forgot your password, guys, there's a, there's a button there that says forgot login. Click on it, you know, the password thing. It happens to all of us. Okay. Um, and then I said, hey, do I want to allow Alexa to use my Apex Fusion account? Why else I said, would I be doing this? I said, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's something I want to do. And then I was done. Okay. Pretty simple. And then I just had, then, you know, I have a lot of Apexes in my list. All right. There's just a couple. Um, but um, on my tank, you know, it's in here in the office. It's RS-170. I clicked on that gear right there. Okay. RS-170. And I clicked on enabled voice. That's a pretty good menu too, by mm -hmm. the way. So if you guys don't, uh, if you haven't really looked at that little gear it's menu, a great menu yeah. it's a great menu because there's a, you know, there's a few different things that you can do there. Mm -hmm. 
Um, you know, and the heartbeat is definitely one, right? Yeah, you have a great video on heartbeat on how to enable that, and we've even made it easier since that video. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's bar none one of the best features you can have on your Apex. Just to give you a little sidebar here, Apex dis gets disconnected from power, internet, whatever, right? Hardware, maybe, right? But, um, you know, you get disconnected, we'll send you a, a notification about that within okay. 40 minutes or so. You cool. Know, there's an algorithm, but it's about averages about that. And then you'll continue to get notifications and get reconnected. Anyway, search uh, Apex Heartbeat. You can find out about more about it. But, but this is where you have to enable voice. So once yep. you've done the stuff in the app for Alexa, now you come into your Apex Fusion, you click on the gear next to your name of your That's Apex, what, yep, yep. and then you select Enable Voice. That's correct. And Apex is used for a voice. And then without any configuration, I can say, hey, Alexa, ask Apex Fusion for a status report. Live demo. I oh, love it. Oh, there it is. I love it. Alexa, ask Apex Fusion for a status report. The temperature for main temp is 76.8 degrees. Ah, uh, there we go. There we so go. it's working. So it's working. And that's it. And uh, next week or two weeks, right? I don't know. What is the next one? Uh, two weeks. Two weeks. So two so weeks from I now. Yeah, I should have told you guys that in the opener. Huh? Yeah, we're going to continue of my... to do this. Okay, let me go back to my notes here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, tell them uh, the format. So yeah. <laughs> uh, one thing I'm uh, possibly going to do, unless some, unless we get a lot of questions you know, about another theme, is how to actually set up some really cool few things with Alexa, like how to feed my fish, how to put my tank into photo mode, and make multiple things happen with just saying, hey, Alexa, ask Apex Fusion to do feed my fish. You know, and it will just feed your fish for you. So that will be what we're looking at in the next two weeks. Um, you know, one okay. thing, unless we get something else where you guys really want to do something else. Well, know? it's definitely, uh, you know, this is, this is the, the format for you guys to give questions and comments. And we'll be looking at those, obviously, after the event as well to see what we're going to do um, in the next shows. And these will be happening every other week. It's too much to put on every week, um, but every other week we're going to be doing one of these. The format will be the same unless you guys, you know, for some reason don't like the format or you want to see something different, and we can certainly change it. Yep. Um, but right now, let me look through some of these here. Uh, how long is the Alexa skill bound? A couple of weeks. Um, lots of Trident questions, Paul. Yeah, yeah. a lot yeah. of Trident questions. We are uh, getting really familiar with those, and that's okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. And Ken, Ken. Ken from saltwateraquarium.com says Fortnite. He's the gamer guy. Um, is there a documented path to migrate from the classic over to the new Apex, Paul? That's a good question. Let's see. That is, let's see, Ellery Wong. Is there a documented path to migrate from the classic over to the new Apex, or are we all stuck with starting from scratch and slowly pulling modules over one at a time? Um, I'm going to start the answer to this just to say, it's probably not going to be as straightforward as any of us would like it to be. Um, let's, let's say this. You're not going to say, I'm looking forward to transferring <laughs> over to a new Apex this weekend. But, but once you're done, you'll be over with and you're going to be loving it. Paul, tell them just real quickly here, like the couple of steps that they should do or maybe a couple of do's and don'ts when they're moving from the Apex Classic or an Apex Junior over to an Apex EL well, or Apex. This could be a whole conversation or a tech tip in itself, okay. uh, number one. Um, but, uh, and uh, there, yes, there is documentation for that. You can go to the neptunesystems.com, select on documents, and there's a migration guide. Um, our favorite uh, forum poster, Russ, Russ M, right? Um, he uh, great, made a great migration guide, answered a lot of FAQs on our forum, forum.neptunesystems.com. Um, if you haven't been there, go there. The, I guarantee your Apex question has been asked and will already have been answered. But ask it again, and someone's there to help. Um, but big do's and don'ts. Um, do not uh, just remove your classic and then take your Apex NG and plug it in. Okay. Don't that, do that. That'd be bad. Um, that, that, it's not necessarily going to be bad, um, but you, know, you probably um, have more than one Apex module. Right, you maybe have multiple energy bars. Oh, I thought. Well, sorry, I thought what you were saying was don't just plug the Apex Classic in at the same time as the. No, the, no, no. The, I mean, the, no, the new saying, Apex I'm and the Apex Classic. Don't just do a hot swap. Got right? it. Okay. There is a methodology methodology behind the whole thing. Okay. And uh, essentially, the best way to do it is add modules one at a time, right, and then do some copying and pasting. It's a great way to move over programming, review your programming, and things like that. If you have a very elaborate configuration, um, it may take some time. Most of your people that have two energy bars, maybe a dose or two a feeder, right? You should be done within an hour or two. Okay. It's really easy to get connected up to Wi-Fi, as I just showed you up there. Um, you know, so, uh, and that's generally the, the, that new users have the most difficulty with, is just getting connected up. Here's a funny network. comment. 
Somebody about Alexa, I'm bummed, I can't use that. My African gray is not compatible. He's talking about his parrot. So evidently <laughs> his parrot is going to be telling his tank what he should or shouldn't do. So that's kind of like fun. It repeats after him, yeah. right? So he just keeps feeding the tank over and over again. Yeah, funny. and here's, here's old George. George, again, more than 29 outlets yet? I think you mean modules, George. Yeah. Um, and um, uh, yes, right? As far as I know, the answer to that is yes. Um, you can uh, get in touch with our tech support team if you haven't already, and I'm sure they're excited to help you out. Absolutely. And uh, look at this, um, Chris. Chris says, also we need an iWatch or an Apple Watch app. And absolutely right, and uh, there's enough of us here using those, so we'll be, uh, we'll be definitely telling the, the engineering team that, that you and other people definitely want it. But Terrence uh, got an iWatch recently. Everyone. I did. So now um, we need I'm an like, iWatch app. I am mm. definitely the Apple Watch uh, guy now. Yeah. Uh, another one, any support for the Kessel AP700? Unfortunately, at this point, the Kessel AP700 is not supported. Uh, however, however, um, if you saw our live stream, you can go back and watch a live stream with Dave from Kessel at Palooza that I did a couple of weekends ago and uh, spoke to Dave about their new 360X, the A360X. It's a pretty cool light. It's a really cool light. Yeah. And in, that, uh, in the specification for that, they'll be able to, um, to work to get IOTA on there, which is our Internet of Things Aquarium protocol. Mm -hmm. So just like the AI lights, it'll be controllable. Now, whether or not they carry that over to the AP700, Dave wouldn't say. Um, it is possible, I think, for them to do it, but we don't know. Mm -hmm. And that's the answer to that Great one. Great light, looking forward to that being I.O. Yeah, for sure. definitely good. Uh, let's see here. P -p 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 There's got to be something else. Let's see. How about an Android widget for our phones and home screen? You know, I love putting some of these out here because it's definitely something we've seen and we, we know that people want. We're waiting to get enough response out of the Android to, um, to put it into the queue, or I should say raise it up in the queue ahead of so many other things. Yeah, I mean, that, that's ultimately what Oh, we can do a poll to. here, though, Paul. We could. Well, well, the poll we could do is, do you want Android widget, or would you like the Trident? <laughs> look, look uh, I mean, guys, ultimately it comes down to, you know, we have a lot of coals in the fire, right? And just so many engineering resources to be able to hit them all. I'm really glad we were able to come out with an Android app um, within the last couple months. I think our Android users have been really happy about that. I do um, too. You know, they've been envious of us iOS users just For being sure. able to unlock it with our faces or our thumbs or whatever, right? So, yeah. um, you know, the widget would be really cool. Um, I hear the iPhone is also going to be moving to kind of a widget thing as well. And, and Definitely, some, uh, those, those, iOSs, those so. are available in the iPhone too, and we hope to expand out both of those apps. It's yeah. just a resources thing. So, yeah, it's a resource thing. Um, Chuck Lee asked, does each IOTA device count as a module? Great question, Chuck. That is a great question. Yes, it does. Each IOTA light does count as a, um, uh, as a module. Um, correct me, uh, maybe someone will correct me later if I'm wrong here, but you can make those childs um, to a parent light and not pair the childs and still control all of them under one light, so to speak. You know, us control freaks don't really like doing it that way mm -hmm. because, you know, we want all of the lights and, yes. and being able to adjust all of them and things like that. Um, but hypothetically, you could keep them as childs and make one parent, and the parent is on IOTA, and the rest of them are all child in um, AI apps. Okay, let me see if I can find one other question in here. Um, this is a good question. Chuck Lee, man, you are asking some great questions here, buddy. So it's two from Chuck Lee. Can you do maintenance log via Alexa? Right now, I think only log test results work. Great question, Chuck. Um, right now, only log tests. So you can okay. say, uh, hey, Alexa, uh, ask Apex Fusion to log my, my, um, my alkalinity at 8.4. Okay. Right. Well, that um, one's going to be taken care of by yeah. Trident well, pretty soon. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> but, my phosphate. But okay, my phosphate. BPM, there we go. Right. So. Um, and uh, Alexa what a great feature! It is because you know you are you, you know when you're doing all those drops and everything like that, it, it's 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 annoying to get. Well, out you got timers going and off. Doing all these sorts of different things. So um, Alexa can do that. I think it would be great if it could also log down the maintenance things and stuff like that. Again, that's something that's a feature request. It's already been out there. It's in our it's in our it's in our improvements that we'd like to see. It's just a matter of. Of do we have the time and the resources to do that right now? Okay. Well, that's the last question we're going to take. I wanted to wrap this thing up, obviously, in, la in less than an hour, somewhere 45 minutes to an hour. Well, so I think we're doing good. Did great. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I really uh, hope you guys enjoyed this program. Uh, again, please let us know in the comments if, uh, if you like it or if you think that the format should change at all. Again, every other week we're going to be doing it. So this would mean today is the 16th, so that means on the 30th, so mm -hmm. the day before Halloween. Maybe I'll come in, you know, in costume. Oh, no. Or Paul will. 
Paul will come in in costume. Um, anyway, thanks again for joining us. We will have this recorded. It'll be available out on Facebook, and I hope to make a copy as well um, and put it out on YouTube and link it all over the place. Thanks again for joining us, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.